Hm. Stay down, maggot. First things first, we got our leveling build. Now, for the leveling build, this is going to be what your bar is going to look at, look like at level 10. So, there are going to be some skills that aren't that too good and that you don't want to prioritize slash use. These skills being Meteor Scream, your Grenade, and your Plasma Bullet. Now, what you do want to use when you unlock this at level 12 is your Equilibrium. Now, this skill right here, Equilibrium, is going to be your main tool for dealing with everything in Lost Ark 1 through 15. The trash mobs, the bosses, the skill is actually just goaded. It's super, super good. And for the build for this, you just want Weakness Exposure for the Crit Resistance debuff you apply, and Enemy Raid, which turns this into the 360 degrees, so you spin around and deal more damage to the trash mobs, and then Vile Point Shot, which just increases the crit rate by a lot. Now this tool right here, Equilibrium, is going to be your just pretty much main, you want to rush it first. It's going to be your main tool for pretty much everything and you want to rush this to level 10 as fast as possible. You'll get there around at level like 22, 23 I think, in order to max this out, but it'll be worth it in the end when you just dump all your points into this and watch everything just melt. But along the way, you won't have enough points for that, so... What you want to do is put some points into your Spiral Flame. You'll only need 4 points into this and just get quick game. This ability is, has a high cooldown, but it does a lot of damage and a lot of AoE to a lot of the trash mobs. And it's semi-decent at chunking out the boss's health, even though it has such a high cooldown. You also want to put 4 points into Sign of the Apocalypse. Now you can either try out the close shot for more damage, or I like to go full range because it just feels better because sometimes the enemies will be at the outer edge of your your damage and you won't get the value of close shot and yeah for these are going to be your very very early on now when coming up to mid game what you really want to focus on is just getting a main tool to deal with the boss now you can either go last request or catastrophe i'll show this last request build if you want to go the shotgun route you'll just get quickly prep execution and you want to get volley because this is just going to be straight up for the boss so you'll just use this either in the front of him or the back of him and it'll do massive damage if you want to go the shotgun route if you don't want to go the shotgun route this ability looks pretty cool by the way it's super fun to use but kind of has some execution to it if you just want to go the rifle way you can always just go catastrophe and for catastrophe you want quick aim kill confirmation and carpet bombing now I recommend going over Catastrophe over Last Request because as you see the cooldowns, 24 seconds versus 36, even with the Quickly Prep, this Catastrophe will still be at a lower cooldown, so I recommend this, but you can, you can try it either or. And now what's your main way of dealing with these bosses in Lost Ark is going to be debuffing them with this. We'll go back to Equilibrium, you'll do a bunch of damage with this, but you also debuff them. Now, say if you don't have this, say if you use on trash mobs, you also want to put points into your Spiral Tracker. And then this will also have the same crit debuff that your Equilibrium has. So very, very important tool for just debuffing the boss and then going out with your big damage. Whether it's whether you want to try your last request or a catastrophe. Now, to fill out everything else, when you're going mid to late game, almost close to 50, you could also just put points and then max out last request but I kind of don't recommend it as you'll just need one kind of big bossing tool you just try and experiment experiment with other things like shotgun rapid fire with combo rapid fire I really like this shotgun dominator when you eventually unlock it with swift fingers you could also go last request which just quickly prep to just you know have it up quickly more quickly so you can just get used to switching weapons and then get used to using every single tool that he has stuff like that so for your main bars I'm just going to fill out my main bars, which you'll normally just use for 1 to 50, is that you're just going to have this death fire, and I almost forgot, this is also another great tool for just AoE trash mobs, is your death fire. It's a higher cooldown, but it's pretty decent in terms of killing the trash mobs, not so much for bossing. For this, you'll want Keen Strike, and you'll get this around level 18, so it's a nice tool, but definitely want to focus Equilibrium first before you put points into that. So you'll have this, you'll have Dexter Shot, which is a movement ability, very nice. Don't need to put any points into that. 
And now you can either put Meteor Scream or Quick Shot onto one of your bars. Either I like to put it here as my build or my binds. And then Cruel Tracker. You can also put points into this. This is the only other skill, pistol skill I recommend putting points in. As you can either go, you can go Swift Fingers, again, movement speed, and to crit rate. So I like this ability. You can even put seven points into this to experiment with it. It's pretty fun. And for your shotguns, you want to skip Hour of Judgment. I don't like this ability. Some people like it. This ability is trash. I hate this ability. I like Rapid Fire way better. And then I just go Dominator into Request. And that's my full bar for my shotguns. And then for sniper skills. Now there's a reason why I skipped out on these two. This one is an awakening quest. And this one you get with your awakening. Your ultimate basically. So these were our like Locked behind a level 50 quest, so don't worry about these. But now this. These skills suck. His rifle skills are trash. They are so bad. This triple shot and aim explosion. Or this triple explosion and aim shot, my bad. This one is only good in PvP. And this one is just straight trash. <laughs> you don't want to be using these for like anything really. Like trash mobs or bosses. I hate these abilities. Just forget about them. Just only use Spiral Flame and Catastrophe, even just like, you can experiment with them out, but I don't even have them in my bar most of the time, I'll just like dump them out. I wouldn't even recommend having them, dude. And with that, you can just pretty much put points into whatever you feel like, you know, except these rifle skills. Experiment with things, try things out, see what they feel like. There's really no wrong way of building it, but the main thing you definitely do want is your Equilibrium your death fire with King Strike and your catastrophe for dealing for dealing huge damage with your bosses or you can go last request and put max that out instead of catastrophe and that's going to be pretty much your main bread and butter leveling with that with the rest of the points that you unlock you can just try different stuff out you know maybe put things to level 7 try different tripods out and just experiment and have fun with it you know there's not really one just there's no there's not really one set build or set way of defining how you play Dead Eye. It's just really what you feel like using really. So with that, that'll be the end of eleven build, and these are all my binds once again. I just have it like this with my movement on W, A, and S, and my debuff on Q. I have my equilibrium, big cooldown on E and F. And my shotgun skills will look like this. Full build until you hit level 50, it won't change. And then this is pretty much the same, except you'll unlock this at 50. And I usually put it here. But when you're leveling, you won't have this, sadly. This skill is amazing. And yeah, it's the leveling build. Now we move right along to the Chaos Dungeon build. Now, as soon as you unlock Chaos Dungeon build, this is going to be your build, and I like to get, keep a separate page for my build, so I have one for Chaos and then one for Raid. So for your Chaos build, you're going to want the same thing as your leveling. You want the Weakness Exposure on your Spinal Tracker. You want your Equilibrium to have Weakness Exposure, Enemy Raid, Vital Point Shot, huge AoE, just clears out mobs easily. Deathfire, you'll just want Keen Strike for that extra crit. And then for your Pistol Skill, Cooler Tracker, I really like this ability. It does a lot of damage. Its AoE is decent. You can put points into this on other skills. Maybe you want more shotguns. You could switch up the build if you would like. This is definitely an optional thing, but I definitely like Cooler Tracker. It does a lot of damage. It's a very fun ability. And for Cruel Tracker, I just run Swift Fingers and Vital Point Shot, so more crit rate, and it's just being in more attack speed, so it can be faster. And then for my shotguns, I like to run full range instead of close shot because I like doing full damage no matter what, not having that conditional of being close. And then I also like running my cooldown instead of enhanced shot. Some people like running the more damage, but I just like cooldown. <laughs> I like being able to use my buttons faster, so I take the cooldown. You could also take enhanced shot. Shotgun rapid fire, combo rapid fire for that juicy attack speed, and the same thing as Sign of the Apocalypse, I like CDR versus more damage. And now for Shotgun Dominator, um, this one doesn't have cooldown, it's for chance of defeating foes. I think this is trash, I don't use it, so I'll just use the damage now. And I also take more attack speed, of course. Always want attack speed, always, always. And now for last request, you want quickly prep, 
execution for the dash and more attack speed. And then you could either run double shot for like a larger AoE or volley for more single target application. If you were to be, I like double shot because you can use last requests for like kind of like the trash mobs and deal a decent amount of damage to all of them and do a decent amount of AoE. Or you, you can run volley and just focus on the yellow boss and stuff like that. I personally like double shot for chaos, but you can try either out in any run and then just test them out. I like double shot though. And for Spiral Flame, always want attack speed, or in this time, aiming speed, and then Growth Bullet. Growth Bullet is super, super nice because it'll kill all the trash mobs on the back end of this, which makes it very, very nice, so you don't have to worry about them. And then I don't put any points in Catastrophe, I don't feel like it's necessary, but what you have to do is you have to unlock your Awakening Clay Bomb. Uh, and all you just have to do is go to Beatrice and just TP back to the place where you give her the arcs and she'll give you her awakening quest and you unlock your ultimate and perfect shot. Now this skill is so good. It's so sad you weren't, be able, you, you weren't able to use this during leveling as this thing does so much damage. You mainly want to use this for the second stage on the yellow guys or the actual boss of that stage. And for the build you want bleed effect which just adds a nice bleed onto them. Precision Shot, which increases the crit rate if you hit the perfect zone, and then Enhanced Shot, which increases the damage if you hit the perfect zone. This skill is just really, really good. And that's going to be all for the Chaos build. Like I said, I recommend you making a separate page out for it. And yeah. You, and also, just a reminder, this is optional. You can put this in other shotgun points, maybe try to get it maxed out. Or when you get enough skill pots, max out a uh, shotgun skill. But for the most part, this is just going to be your shot type. As you see, oh, one last thing. As you see, I have none of these on my bar because they're absolutely trash. So I don't even bother to put on them. I just have my spiral, my catastrophe, and my perfect shot here. And these are just my binds. And this is what I run with with Chaos Dungeons, pretty much. So yeah. And now to talk about the raid page. Now for the raid page, it's pretty much going to be very similar to your Chaos build, but tweaked in a little bit. More points in Shotgun, as you'll see later. So if you want Spiral Tracker, Weakness Exposure, always good. This is used for to debuff the boss for you and your party. Very nice. Now, these are just extra skills. You can always take them out and put in Shotguns as you learn Skill Pots. This is what I usually do, but since you'll only be running 252 or 255, depending on how much you got along the way, I'll just put points into Meteor Scream because why not? And I just usually do push immune fill, push immune foes, which is the bosses. So I just usually put it in that. Now for your equilibrium. Now, once you get enough skill points, you can also take a range shot, but just for now, because you won't have enough skill points, you just take the weakness exposure and treat it as the same thing as your spell tracker, or try to have as much uptime of the debuff as possible on the boss as these will reduce the crit rate, or the crit, the crit resistance of the boss. And for Crude Tracker, I'll have Swift Fingers on it, again, just to make it faster. And again, this is like Meteor Scream, this is optional. When you get enough skill points, you can buff something up later on along. Um, and now we have our first shotgun ability, Sign of the Apocalypse. I like full range, and then I also like quickly prep. Same thing with the Chaos build before. You could also run the Enhanced Shot, if you feel like it. But I always like having the CDR. I always like being able to use my abilities that much faster. Personally, I don't know which better or more optimal. I just like CDR, so <laughs> I usually take the CDR, but you could also take a hand shot. And for your shotgun rapid fire, same thing as is before with your sign of the apocalypse, you could also take the enhanced shot. I just like the CDR. And then for the third level though, you want the push immune again, this little guy with the horns, this is always the kind of like deal extra damage to the bosses. Always want to take that if you see that. And for a shotgun dominator, same thing as four, guy with the horns, damage to push me in flows, and then the sword with a little cyclone around it, more attack speed. And for last request, CDR, cooldown, guy with the horns, and then more attack speed as well. But this one is damage to staggered foes though, however, not push immune, so kind of weird. And then we want volley for that nice juicy single target. One interesting note about your last request is that if you've noticed in your guardian raids that the boss will sometimes flash blue like the bear boss. 
when that happens, you can go for a counterattack, which will leave them stunned for like maybe like two, three seconds. And that counterattack will only apply if you go if you attack them head on. So if you get a head attack. So counters apply on head attack with blue aura. And this is a bit tricky as you'll have to switch the shotgun and immediately react to it. So don't worry about it too much if you can't get the counters. To be honest, I can't even get them. And now for Spiral Flame, we have quick aim, reducing the time. Easy. Always want that fastness, always want that speed. And now we get the Catastrophe. Now, I really like Catastrophe. I've seen some builds out there that don't run the Catastrophe, and I scratch my head on why, because this skill is very nice to use. And plus, combined with your engraving, which I'll um, go over a little bit longer down the line, it's just a very, very nice ability for just dealing a lot of damage to the boss. And it's nice to spread out your stats around shotgun and rifle so don't know why some builds don't run this but what you want to run is quick aim for fasterness more speed and then concussion for the stagger or you could run kill confirmation i like running concussion because it's very important in lost ark some bosses some guardian bosses will be able to be staggered so like the bear boss if you do enough stagger damage to him he'll be stunned for like six seconds long stun and some abyss dungeons require that stagger check some bosses will have to be staggered in order you for you to progress the boss. Because if you don't pass the stagger check, your raid wipes. So this is very nice to have as you'll just be able to more easily pass the stagger check with Catastrophe and Last Request as they do a lot of stagger damage. And then for your last one, you want Carpet Bombing, which just increases the bomb count. So instead of one bomb, you'll have two. Nice, 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 nice. Double damage, basically. It's very nice. And now finally for the last rifle skill, uh, again with the stagger check, I run muscle spasm instead of bleed effect, but you could run bleed effects for more damage. Again, muscle spasm for the increase of stagger, so you don't fail those stagger checks and can stagger the boss easily. I just like this for the utility, but you could also run bleed effect, and then it's the same as chaos, precision shot for the more crit on perfect hit zone, and a hand shot for the more damage. And then you just run your clay bomb when you eventually get it, and just put it on your bar. And yeah, this is basically how my bar looks like. Also of note, I don't have any of these rifle skills because they are just bad. If I find myself at any point needing a filler skill, I will not be using these at all. So I just take them off my bar and I just have it by Spiral Flame, Catastrophe, and Perfect Shot. These skills are seriously trash. Don't use them. I mean, you can test them out, but I guess not while you're in raid. That's my pistol. I'll have Scream on D. Have my equilibrium on E, and yeah, my build, and then the same for, it's the same thing as chaos, my shotguns, and that will be all for the chaos build. Oh, and one last thing before I forget, a little tidbit about runes. You'll get runes um, just as you play the story and do islands and like quests and stuff like that, and do guardian raids and stuff like that. You'll see like the rewards are these runes. Just fill out these runes on whatever you find appropriate. Right, so more stagger damage than you want either on last request, skill casting speed, I have this on my perfect shot. You can basically just fill it out in general. Also one note about runes is that runes are uh, account wide, so once you unlock them on one character, everyone can use them, so all your alts can use them. They are not bound to one character. Now I'm going to be breaking down the early leveling gearing process of Lost Ark. It's Kind of confusing at first but i'm gonna break it down on all these things like combat stats jewelry engravings stuff like that well engravings i'll cover a little bit later but for now just notice that you know how just how everything has a quality behind it so this one's quality 97 quality 59 quality 85 now the quality only affects your bonus effect so as you can see it says basic effect dexterity vitality and then bonus effect so the more quality you have the more bonus effect stat points are going to be allocated to that spot. So you'll want more quality on your jewelry for sure for more bonus effect and more combat stats in general. Now for your gear, it doesn't really matter your bonus effect because your bonus effect is only defense and vitality, not something you really want to pay too much attention to. However, your weapon is something you want to pay attention to as the bonus effect of your weapon is additional damage, so you'll definitely want a high. You want to look for a high quality weapon. 
and for your combat stats. Now your combat stats are based off your bonus effect of your jewelry. And for your combat stats, what you mainly want to prioritize is crit, as crit give you, gives you crit rate. And at 250, you'll gain around 10% crit rate. At 550, you'll gain around 25, you'll gain around 20% crit rate. And at 750, you'll gain around 25% crit rate. So the sweet spot is max out. You'll mainly want to look for 550 crit or 250 for that 10% or 20% crit. Ideally, you want the 550 for 20%. And that's going to be your main stat to, you want to look for in your jewelry is crit. Your second main stat you want to be looking for is Swiftness. Swiftness affects your attack speed, move speed, and CDR. And you want to be looking for it mainly as secondary wise. So on your neck, your earrings, and your rings and stuff like that. And now, if you're not too lucky with your neck and can't get a crit and a Swiftness neck like me, you can always go for Specialization. Specialization is your third best option when it comes to that when it comes to looking for combat stats. Domination, not too good. And expertise, not too good. And endurance is just defense. So those are the three you're mainly gonna be looking for. It's gonna be crit, swiftness, and specialization, thirdly. And that's on your jewelry. Now, as you may notice on your jewelry, you'll have random engraving effects. Throw these out the window. You don't wanna pay attention to them early on as they won't give you enough points to really build out an engraving set. You might think you want to build out an engraving set with your jewelry, but just worry about it on the later on tiers. What you really wanna worry about is your bonus effect and getting that grit or swiftness on your rings and your neck. The most importantly is your neck though, as it gives you the most stats, so you wanna be looking for that crit swiftness neck, hopefully. And then, yeah. Or, if you're unlucky, you can also go crit specialization. And that's why specialization is there for thirdly, if you can't find that crit swiftness neck. And for your stone, this one is going to be the one you're going to be looking out for your engravings. And this is how you're going to get your kind of basic beginning level one engravings, is through your stone. And, yeah. And one, one more thing to mention with your jewelry. As you progress through purple as your rare, epic, and then legendary, it also affects the amount of basic effect you'll get. So purple has more dexterity than blue. Uh, legendary has more dexterity. It's something to keep in mind, but if the piece you're upgrading doesn't have the correct bonus effects, then it's not really worth upgrading because you mainly want to prioritize the combat stats of crit, swiftness, and specialization early on. And that's going to be all for the kind of gearing process, the whole gear, jewelry, and the basically all your, your gear page. One little short little thing I forgot to mention though that goes with hand in hand with the gearing process is your Abyssal Dungeons. Now these dungeons are kind of difficult if you're very very new to them, aka it's your first time, as there are some mechanics so I recommend on going some third party sites to look up these mechanics. I'll put one of them that I really like using in the description below. But when you run through these dungeons, as you see Necromancer's Origins, you can get your purple gear and the jewelry. The jewelry from here is always guaranteed to give you your class engravings. So that's how you can make it so you can look for the correct bonus effects for your combat stats, as well as getting your class engravings at the same time. Killing two birds with one stone is very nice. And for your purple gear, for upgrading it, the game doesn't specifically tell you how to do it. Well, all you just do is you get Knight's Oaths when you complete the dungeon and you get a chance of getting one of the pieces from that Necromancer's Origin. And where you just redeem them is go anywhere in a major city and just look for the Craft Abyss equipment. And that's the person you want to do is to trade in all your um, Knight's Oaths for your full set of purple gear. And what you just do is go to the honing guy and in that little tab it'll say gear transfer and you just transfer your blue gear into your purple gear and that is the final little thing for gearing process now finally to talk about engravings now engravings are kind of confusing at first but we'll do a fine job at trying to walk through how engravings works so as you can see you have this engraving list right here 
And then you have switch over to class bonus, you have enhanced weapon and pistolier. Yeah. I recommend going enhanced weapon and learning the books of a books of enhanced weapon. And the way you get these books is if you go through this island guide, which I'll link in the description below, and it's also the best way to get to fastest way to get to item level 600 so you can get to tier 2 is that you read up on these books so you'll get these chests that say uncommon engraving recipe and you can see it will always contain all these different class engravings so for deadeye as you see the very top one deadeye enhanced weapon so all you just have to do is open 20 of these chests and inside 20 of those chests you open 20 of those deadeye enhanced weapons and once you read 20 of those books There'll be a little token right here that you can move around and it'll say plus three and all you do is that you'll take this token once you read 20 of the green books and you'll just drop them on your character page and it'll glow green so you just take it once you read it and it says plus three and it's lit up take it drop it and then take it and drop it and then for your engravings you'll have a plus six enhanced weapon and that is one way of getting your class engravings. Another way is going to your Abyssal Dungeons and running your Abyssal Dungeons for your jewelry that is guaranteed to contain either Pustelier or Enhanced Weapon. I recommend though, if you're maining Deadeye, just read the books. If you're using him as an alt, I recommend just going the Abyssal Dungeon route as these class engraving books can get pretty expensive. And you might as well just use the Abyssal Dungeon in your favor of getting your class engraving. Now with that out of the way, I recommend Enhanced Weapon. Gives you a nice crit rate when changing stances. But for general engravings, for general engravings, I'll just include a list of general engravings I like in the description. I'll go over some brief, I'll briefly overview some of them I like uh, on this page. And what I like to go for on either my stone or basically all my stone because these remember i only want my combat stats when possible always want to focus combat stats so this will just mainly be on my stone and i'll usually just get it whenever i can get an upgrade on stone or i just find a good stone that has two of them i really like and you know pay to the rng gods that i get lucky and hit the level one procs on them anyway with that out of the way i like all out attack which holding casting skill speed and then damage this is really nice for your perfect shot. It affects your perfect shot, your catastrophe. It affects your shotgun dominator. And it's just a really, really nice uh, engraving. Uh, what else do I like? I like Cursed All, if you can get it. The level one, even though it's only attack power plus three, it's still something, you know? If you're just looking for anything, really. Let's see, what else do I like? I don't like Grudge level 1. If you could read a lot of books of Grudge and get this to level 3, I highly recommend it. But for level 1 on your stone, and if you're just getting it to level 1, I don't recommend it. Highly recommend for the level 3 though. Everyone will want this though. It's very expensive. I like... what else do I like? Mm, I like Master of Ambush for increased back attack damage. Very nice as well. I like Propulsion. Even though he doesn't have as much movement ability as the Gunslinger, he still has three movement abilities, so propulsion is very nice on him. I like Sight Focus. Sight Focus is very nice for that random extra damage proc. I like Spirit Absorption. It's not the best, but it's something. Attack speed and movement speed plus 3%. Stabilized status. Also, not the best, but it's something. Plus 3 damage when your HP is above 80%. And most of the time, you don't want to be tanking the mechanics of the bosses and stuff, so I don't like this one. And then Supercharge. This one is super nice. It's the same thing as All Out Attack, sort of, but it's only charge skills now. So only your Perfect Shot and your Shotgun Dominator, but it is very, very nice. Very nice engraving. And that'll be all for the engravings. And finally, to wrap things up. Like I mentioned in the engravings before, in order to get those chests that I mentioned before in the engraving section to get your class engraving, the best thing to do and for resources in general to get this to gear gear score 600 so you can get the tier 2 is this guide right here. This guide right here is so good. So so good. Because if you follow this Ganea C route and follow this from one through, you know, step 16, just follow the steps. You go through all these cool little islands and explore them and 
you'll get rewarded with some hefty stones for upgrading, whether it be harmony shards or your blue or red, uh, blue or red stones for upgrading your gear. And the class engravings, most important. These class engravings, so you can read 20 of the books and then have your enhanced weapon. As well as the songs for rapport and stuff like that. Like this, this guide is so good. It helped me so much. It helped me through tier one and tier two. It has a tier two section as well for all the resources. So you can boost yourself up all the way to uh, Phaeton. And yeah, I'll be linking this in the description. And with that, that will be the end of the guide. Peace.